Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to another Mighty Ginkgo Tutorials. Well, it's not really a tutorial, this is kind of a special little segment that I started up where I have a good friend on the line and I do a commission, and you guys watch me act like I'm professional or something like that. So, in our first episode, uh, we are doing this. We have the great Shujin Tribble here. Hello. I'm sure you guys remember, he pops up online all the time. Every time I'm doing a tutorial, it's like in the corner here. And my Skype is like, Shujin's online. Shujin's online. <laughs> so, um, we are going to remake this dress that we have here. This is the Fujin dress that was made for the classic avatar back in the day. And we're just going to give it a nice ma mesh modern twist. And that's okay with you? It's perfectly fine by me. All right. So this dress is a special dress. And I hope, Shujin, you could tell us more about this dress and what it means to you. Absolutely. The dress was originally built by Mimika O oh from Bibikin Studios. Uh, she was wonderful to work with at the time. The idea was that I wanted to have someone recreate a dress that my wife learned to love. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, and I wanted to make it uh, a special gift for everyone in Second Life for free, forever, if possible. And Mimica was wonderful about crafting that and making it exactly that. Uh, the dress is actually a recreation of one that my wife actually, like I said, learned to love. And Ooh, it's, it's a real thing. I think we actually have a picture of the dress. It should be... Here? Oh, that's, that's the one. one. There we go. Sorry about that. No, it's actually, the other one is a little bit more fun. Okay, this one with the handsome gent on her arm. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> there's, a story, there's another story behind that one, too, but uh, uh, let me finish off with this. Okay. Uh, we were at a store, local, and they were having uh, a bit of a sale. And, you know, we're, we're married. We're relatively new, newly married and we're going through and we're looking at stuff and I double check, you know, what size are you? Five. It's okay. I'm looking through stuff and I find this one and it kind of just called to me and it was like, well, this is kind of, this is beautiful. And I showed it over to her and she kind of scrunched her face a little bit. See, my wife is half Jap well, was half Japanese. Her mom was actually from Japan. So she looked over at the thing and she kind of scrunched her face and kind of gave me this really kind of look. And I'm like, come on, just humor me a little bit. Fine. So she went, she tried it on. And I asked her what she thought of it. Didn't come out. A couple minutes later, she finally comes out. We're buying this. Okay. No argument, because, you know, I, I wasn't going to argue. And I found out why. Because this dress specifically bordered on, I won't exactly call it a kink. I won't call it a fetish, but it was a definite plus for her. Now, you know how these dresses, usually you have the line that opens from the neck down to the side, and it opens down the side, uh, this particular style, the chansan. You know how that design is supposed to work, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. This one doesn't. This one actually has a zipper down the back. Ooh. But the way that the neck piece is sewn together, it's sewn closed at the top, at the neck. It's sewn closed just after the third frog down. So it can never fall open, but it's gapped in such a way that it always looks like it's just half a step away from falling open and falling off. That is cool. And that is the old, for anybody that knows it, the old Bill Thies idea of how to design clothing. <laughs> the titillation factor is directly proportional to how little effort it would take, apparently, for it to fall off. <laughs> and Bill Thies was the guy that did uh, designs for the old original Star Trek series. So all the ladies stuff that looks like it was half a breath away from falling off. Uh -huh. Yeah. That was that's all his work. That's all intentional. I never really thought about it, but it really does me think about it. Yeah, like, he was he was brilliant, smart about it. One trip and you see everything. Wow. 
<laughs> but it was designed so that it wouldn't. And that was a thing. Now, um, I did say and correct myself from is to was. Uh, unfortunately, 12 years ago, as of the recording of this, we lost her 12 years ago to a form of cancer mm -hmm. uh, called angiosarcoma. And that was part of the reason why I wanted to have this built, because I was going to start doing fundraising in Second Life for the cancer research hospital that was helping us out and helped her out for uh, almost three years. Mm -hmm. And I've... Over the years, I've been able to do uh, fundraising in Second Life. Uh, this particular year, uh, 2017, the fundraising so far is upwards in world, upwards of 150 US dollars. Wow. Uh, and that's, that's not including all the stuff that I really need to go looking at, but you know, it's, it's more than zero. And that's all I care about, because every little bit to uh, a cancer research hospital is one step closer to my fulfilling my goal of revenge on this disease. And we're all about getting revenge here. We totally support revenge on the ginkgo. <laughs> we tried to um, do cancer what was it research before, like funding for cancer research when I was with the Goon Squad. And somebody actually, like we, we raised $300 for the cancer research. And somebody contacted them and told them that we were a thieving group who steals money from people's accounts. And that's the money that we donated to them was stolen money. And they actually believed it and returned the money back to us. Great. I was like, we raised this money on donations. <laughs> And they're like, no, no. I'm like, we can't accept it. It was through bad means. It's like, oh, great. Sure. Yeah. Um, at the risk of uh, at the risk of making some people a little squeamish about this one, there is a there is a story. Uh, mm -hmm. Rough. I want to say roughly two years ago, within the last two years or so. Yeah. Where a group of people were raising money for cancer research, and they were going to donate it to. Uh, the American Cancer Society, if Ooh, I remember best. correctly. <laughs> They're the ones that gave her the money back. <laughs> well, here's where you're going to find this one interesting, to put it nicely. Okay. They were going to raise uh, money, and they had somebody who was looking to uh, match them dollar for dollar up to, I believe it was $25,000, so they were looking at upwards of fifty grand plus. Mm-hmm. And when they found out that the group was looking to have, you know, if they raise a certain amount of money that they would be uh, featured on their website, cool, a lot of money, we'll feature on the website, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then found out that it was specifically an atheist group. Oh, and they suddenly changed their mind and drug their heels and eventually said, no, we are not going to do this and started to come up with a whole bunch of reasons that were kind of made up on the spot. They needed to follow through with some other group. Well, they couldn't feature a group because they didn't have some XYZ thing. And okay, well, we'll go through this other group that fits with what you're looking for. Oh, well, they're not uh, specifically formally affiliated with uh, another group group so we're not gonna okay well we'll go through this group instead mm -hmm. and and so on and it became a thing and that's when I that's basically when I said look it's 50,000 and at that point they were looking to up it mm -hmm. to basically say you know how much money is enough money for you to finally just say yeah money is good for the cause and that's when I finally said to myself you know what it may take a while. It may be tough. But one of these days, I want my fundraising to end up being bigger than Ride for Life in Second Life. One day. And they ain't, that day ain't today. Not by a long shot. But one day, I hope that that's what I can do. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be going into a national organization. 
it may be only to a local, but it's going specifically to the cause without anybody having said, well, this is not uh, what we want because it's not from a group that's going to make us squirm. You know what? If it's blood money from the mafia, <coughs> yeah, okay, I can see that. If it's from a, a group that's specifically advocating violence, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's somebody that you've got a disagreement on on a particular issue. The life and well-being of families and, you know, people... My wife, 34 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. A two and a half year old kid and myself left behind. For no other reason other than just a freaking roll of the dice that went bad. You know... There's, there's bigger things involved, and when a group can just not set that aside for the greater good, uh, I'm sorry, there's there's just something wrong with that. Yeah, especially after all that commercials where they're like, we're the greatest thing in cancer research, and we help everybody, blah. Almost. Almost. As long as you're not an atheist, we'll help you. <laughs> Apparently not. Now, for anybody that's listening and watching, please understand... I and, and please understand how I'm saying this. I don't care where you end up on the line of your believer, your non-believer. I don't care where this is concerned. This is about families. This is about people who just, like I said, had a bad roll of the dice and it just happened that way. And that sucks. No two ways about it. Yeah, but it when it's families... When it's people who, I'm, I'm not saying that people who are in their 80s don't deserve to have the same level of care. Mm -hmm. But if you've gotten into your 80s, you know, we start to think of it in terms of, okay, let's give you a fighting chance. But when you're in your 30s, I'm sorry, there's just something about that where you just have to go... Nah, man, you, you haven't even had an opportunity yet. Really. Yeah. So even though at this point we're at uh, $150 US uh, in world that I've been able to figure out so far, because I, I still really have to go through, we've done better. We've had other years, early on especially, where you know we raised over $1,000. Does it hurt to be able to say that we're down to 10% of that? Yeah. But it's been really tough for 12 years trying to maintain. And there are some there are some months that have been better. There are some months that have been worse. There are a lot of months that have been worse. <laughs> but I'm still here. I'm still doing. You know, our kid is a 95 student. And... I'm still chugging along, hard and as it is. absolutely adorable. I might add real quick. Tiny is so cute. Tiny is an amazing personality. You know, one of the things that I promised my wife was oh. that we would give her as normal a life as possible. And I've done my damnedest to make sure that that was the case. She seems like a nice, rounded young lady. They very much are. Okay. Oh. So tell me a little bit about how this operates, because I've I've looked at Blender, I've put it aside, I've <laughs> got um, I I've I will admit I have Blender for Dummies. I haven't cracked it open in months because it is so freaking daunting to me. Just opening up blender and just looking at it and going mm, nope not today <laughs> well this is marvelous designer and it works by it's a pattern simulator program it's supposed to be used by professionals who um, want to test their patterns out before they ship it to a manufacturer but we 3d people use it for you know making clothes on our objects without having to do all the tedious work of 
padded cloth simulation and all the rest of that junk because this does it for you. Yeah, the few times that I've done, uh, I've used GIMP because I was using the Ooh, classic okay. avatar. Hey, when you have no money and virtually no skill, it works. Um, no lie. I could not do GIMP. I opened up GIMP and I cried. <laughs> My brother was like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I need Photoshop. Give me Photoshop. <laughs> well, when you when you know what you're doing, uh -huh. GIMP, I mean, Photoshop is the weapon of choice. I mean, no, no two is about it. But when you're somebody like me who has no training, pretty much no real ability in drawing and such. I broke it. And considering that, you know, GIMP is free, you can't Photoshop really... Is free. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft Paint is free. But then again, this is also somebody who doesn't use a Microsoft OS, so there you go. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You Linux hippie. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, you're awesome. I can do it. I need the... I'm stuck in the windows. That's okay. You know like with everything else like i was saying if if the mm -hmm. weapon of choice works for you that's what's important uh -huh. i'm sorry i broke the dress i'm trying to repair it back i thought i could probably put a split in here like oh, i can just sew in a split and i'm like, no normally i do that in blender and i'm like trying to be fancy control z control z <laughs> that's what i was just doing i was like control z control z control z, control z. <laughs> All right, there we go. There, that's the base for the dress. Then we can go and blend it real quick. This does not help my cause when I'm telling people I can actually do more advanced garments. And they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> she can't even make a dress. It's not about that. All right. There is an expression that was taught to me. Mm -hmm. Young guy goes to be an apprentice to a woodworker. Yeah. And the woodworker explains to him, what goes on in the place, the stuff that he builds, the pieces that he manufactures, the artistry that goes into it. And kids just like, yep, yep, yep. I know how to do that, know how to do that. And finally, the master of the shop is finally just, okay. So what would you do when you make a mistake? Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Well, actually, <laughs> since you're working with actual wood. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What would you do? The cocky kid said, won't ever happen. I don't make mistakes. And the guy said, thank you. That's all. And um, I won't be hiring you, but thank you for your time. Guy got all indignant. Why? What the hell? If you've never made a mistake before, you will never know what to do when you do. I don't have time to teach you how to relearn the art. That is deep. We're always going to make a mistake in something that we're making, especially in something creative. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. You make a mistake and okay, it doesn't fit what you're working with now. But you're going to remember that mistake later. And maybe it'll be a matter that you'll know how to fix it for something later. Or it'll become a piece that will be incorporated later. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe the mistake turns out to be exactly the right design style for something else later. I mean, hell, that's <laughs> jazz, man. That's exactly what it is. One time you throw a wrong note, it's a mistake. Twice. It's a it's a it's a performance style. <coughs> That's, whoops. I forgot how to round things. Like I think it's no. It's in there. It's just a matter of just relocating it again. And by the way, mm -hmm. I'm. I'm deeply and terribly flattered. I did not realize that this was going to be the first of this kind of series for you. I'm honored that you would think of me for this. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. I'm just glad you did it. I thought you'd have been like, nope, I'm busy, beat it. 
No, no, not so much. The place where I had been working, unfortunately, uh, closed up a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I'm just chilling. Basically, is what it comes down to. Yeah. <laughs> My plan is to uh, do the creative artistry type stuff that I do have some knowledge about how to do and uh, make that my at-home job, which is, oddly enough, in the 21st century, leather crafting. Oh, yeah. I remember you told me about that and how you made an exquisite wallet or item for a friend's wedding. I did. That was uh, a couple of years ago. I have no idea if it was uh, seen in quite the manner that I was trying to make it for him. But what I literally did was I took the text of their wedding invitation and I carved it and stamped it and stained it into a big leather piece. It took a long time to do. Uh, it was not easy. And as a matter of fact, the carving was done in a weight of leather you're not supposed to do that with which is called the lining leather. Mm -hmm. The same way that you have lining material when you're making actual clothing, which is very thin, but it's just there to make sure that you know you don't rub the heck out of something. Lining leather is exactly the same way. It's very thin, mm -hmm. and you basically sandwich it against the inside edge of whatever leather piece you're working with. For wallets, good quality wallets, it would be on the inside. It would be what your money actually... <coughs> rests against mm -hmm. and it's so thin that well you're really not supposed to do that because you can just go straight through and you know carve straight through to the floor if you're not careful mm -hmm. sorry for the uh, black screen that's all right see so brush as a diva that's okay Try to remember if I've ever played with ZBrush before. I think I have. Uh, I need to learn it properly. I just use it for half ass and topology. <laughs> Again, if it does the job, that's the job. That's our model around here. Wink. Use it if it works. Yeah. You would think you watched the show. You would think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> all right, so this is the current topology see how it's all fractured with triangles mm -hmm. now we're going to make it beautiful with quads because that's all the rage these days now if i can remember what they told me to press uh, polygraphs <laughs> let's see Poly no whammies no whammies no whammies no whammies <laughs> basically z brush and then freeze groups freeze groups i'm so happy for the people who commented and told me how to do this i was like uh, you just lose the, the map, in. but it looks pretty. She's like, Zero, just press the button. It's like, what? Oh. So you actually have people commenting on your videos. Good. Good we, on you. Good. Yeah, it's it's run really by the community. I do something the best I could. Let's see. Oh, now it's all square. I do something the best I can, mostly half assing it through. And people come and correct it little by little, and then we get a better workflow. And then I make another video with the corrected, you know, both cheeks in the fire. Excellent. And then we get a working workflow for everybody to do their thing with. So back in Blender. So if anybody wants to actually hear Bunny uh, totally blush, ask how we met someday. <laughs> yeah, you should go ahead and do that. You know what? I think that they, I think there should be an entire comment thread that tries to figure out after you said that what the possible is, and somebody's gonna get it eventually. And they should get a prize. They should they should get a special ding. That's what they should get. Yeah, they'll get a special ding if you guess how we met. <laughs> and that's all it's gonna take. That's terrible, you evil man, you. <coughs> And yet, you still publish this video. Yeah. Who's the more evil of us? Oh. 
goodness gracious me. It says I'm a married lady now. Nothing like that anymore. <laughs> I say true <laughs> laugh. <sighs> so now that the topology is uh, gorgeous, <laughs> try fixing it because it's crooked. Even I can see that. Fair enough. And for for everybody to know, I've teased Bun for a long time. We we have known each other quite. Uh, it's what it's got to be eight years ish yeah. by now. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Bun's good people. And mm -hmm. the only reason why I tease is because she knows full well. I am a gentleman pervert. I have a badge. Believe it or not, I have an actual legit badge. Real life. That was bestowed upon me to say it. Um, that way it's official. Yeah. And she's been she's been good people to me for a long time. And the fact that you are married, I am pleased. I'm well, thrilled. And well, wait, no I'm not really it. married. I'm like engaged. Still, still. It's close enough. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> in your heart, you are married. Yeah, I'm married in my heart. And there you go. <laughs> Don't get the cat on your side. <laughs> All right, so let's rip off those faces and cut this open. Then we're going to pretend. That is a terrible thing to do to a cat. Oh, not the cat, not the cat. <laughs> the dress, the dress. Oh, oh, gotcha. So I feel like it, the damn diva. She'll glare at you if you don't give her water. And then she'll look at you if you don't run it for a while. Like, is this water cold? Did you run it? Ugh, I can't drink this. Hmm. No. I think I should turn this off. Pull it up. I got a buddy who's got uh, some cats. They, you know, at least one of them, will occasionally complain if there are no ice cubes in the water dish. Oh my god, it sounds like my mom's dog. She has to have ice in her water or she's like, ugh. At least she's over her whole filtered water thing. And it's drinking regular water. Like, I'm like, don't forget to water the dog. And I'm like, all right, sure. Gave her water. She's like, did you give her the filtered water out of the sink, out of the, um, out of the refrigerator? I'm like, no, I just gave her sink water. It's like, oh, she won't drink that. <laughs> sure enough, she didn't. You have to make sure that it's filtered water or else she won't drink it. I never met such snobby animals. Or it's just something about the way that the taste is for the tap. <laughs> there are, you know, there are actual competitions to find out what city has the best tap water for <laughs> smell and taste and all that. It sure as heck ain't Delaware water. It's full of bleach. <laughs> Probably why I'm sick. All that bleach water. I don't quite have that problem. Lucky. I I take it straight out of the ground. Lucky. Yeah, I'm way out in the sticks, man. All right. Now, this is going to be the challenge part for me. It's these things that seal the dress together. Now, it's like the eternal question. Do I go with mesh or do we go with texture? Well, they are actually pieces of, well, I'll just call them what they are. They're basically pieces of rope. All right, mesh it is. Oh, let's see. I wish I could see them up close. See, now, if I did some preparation work and asked you in advance, then maybe you could have gave me a shot of it. I gotta use my imagination. 
she's gonna be fine. Well, let's see if I can find for you. I'm sorry, I meant to do planning for this in advance, but I got sick. So I'm still slightly coughing, but I'm not hacking up a lung, which is great progress. That uh, is. Ah! I can do a picture for you that will help you understand. There you are. Oops. How do you... Oh, dear. There. Yeah! Wow! God, you supposed to... <laughs> That's what I thought it was. Now, um, how do you make that with mesh? I don't know. Let me see if this will agree with me. I mean, it came out of ZBrush, so it should. I hate that all these icons look alike. The icon for Sculptress looks exactly like the icon for Singularity. So I'm like, is, is this singularity or is this sculptress? I don't know. No one knows. See, because me, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's sculptress being a butt. That's what that is. I'm gonna try running it through ZBrush one more time. Maybe that'll help. Like, I know you can sculpt in Blender, but I just love the clay like feel of Sculptress. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, again, you know, whatever whatever works and fits the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've seen some folks who have used uh, five, six different painting programs and 3D programs in order to create you know, uh, videos oh. and then have to use another program on top of that to mix all the pieces together. So, you know, it's, it's as always, it's whatever works. If you know what to use and how to use it and you can put it together afterwards, you know, who cares which one you're using? I love your outlook. <laughs> So people are like so judgy. No, see, for me, when my, the first computer that I bought for myself was an Amiga, which is made by Commodore, the guys who made the Commodore sixty four way back in the day, one of the one of the best little computers, and there are places that are still using them for specifically the fact that they've got that built in speech synthesis program, and you know it's all simple electronics that if anything were to break you can literally open up the machine yeah. use a soldering iron and replace individual components which you can't you can't really do that anymore but on the amiga i had to learn that you know it's not going to run ms dos it's not going to run mac os it's its own operating system it's got its own quirks it's got its own pieces and you kind of have to work around what everybody else is working with in order to make it happen. So I had to learn that, you know, okay, bitmap out of MS Paint. Okay, I, I know how to work with that. I can load that into the print program that I've got and export it as a JPEG. Okay, we know how to do this and change it over to make it as a, a, a 16 color GIF image. So I learned to you know, adapt to whatever was going on around me. Mm -hmm. And under Linux, it's <coughs> not quite different 
it's not quite the same. There's a lot more support. You know, the internet is available so that if there's something that happens that I don't know how to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Does anybody else figure it out? Oh, you two, you two guys figured it out. Okay, what do I need to do? Okay, copy and paste this into the machine. Give it a password so it knows that I really wanted to do this. Okay, good, done. It works. Beautiful. I love it when that happens. <laughs> Is it often that it doesn't? Every once in a while, there will be something that doesn't work right. It's unusual, but it does happen. But for the most part, the community of, of people helping out and trying to figure out, okay, how is this supposed to work? Why doesn't this work? Oh, well, you're just missing this library file, probably. Let's see, what's the error message that you're getting? Yep, that's this library file. You need to pop that in there. Okay, good, done. That is way too complicated for me. I mean, it sounds fun, like really fun, but I'm I'm a, I'm an instant satisfaction girl. Like, I need it done now. Usually, believe it or not, once you've got the explanations and the explanation on how to fix it, it's usually a fix inside of a minute. Type in a couple of commands or literally copy and paste from the website where the information is. Put it into the uh, uh, put it into the uh, shell window, you know, where you can actually type in actual commands. Mm -hmm. Give it a couple of moments to download a couple of files, reconfigure something. OK, log out, log back in. Done. Hmm. I mean, I've got a lot of uh, I've got a lot of files for GIMP where I wasn't able to see what the thumbnail was of the project. And I knew that it worked before I went looking for it. And it's like, oh, yeah, you just got to change the setting. Log, log out, log back in. You're good. Uh, OK, uh, change the setting, log out, log back in, open up the directory. Chug, 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 thumbnails. Brrrp. Oh, well, that was easy. And yes, I do still have, or I should say I have, again, an actual Windows boot system because I've got one program in particular that did not want to do emulation whatsoever. And it was kind of important because it was a really cool game. Oh. Elite Dangerous. Never heard of it. It's a space sim where the guys have literally are simulating the entirety of the galaxy. But the galaxy is infinite. How can one simulate it? Uh, no, the universe. Oh, okay. <laughs> the galaxy is just our Milky Way galaxy. Any one of those is infinite. Uh, no. Oh. Galaxy isn't infinite. Universe is maybe. Oh, that's looking suggestive. Come on, dig in there. Trust me, if there's one thing that I know about, it's my space science. I know as much as Star Trek has taught me. Well, you're a lot better off than some people that I know about. <laughs> Did you hear about the people on the QVC who were arguing about the moon? <laughs> <laughs> the moon is a planet. It's right there. It's a star. It's not a sun. It's like no. It's not a sun. It's a star. Satellite. I. I. Oh. <laughs> that made my day when I saw that. The Yo dryer rings again. I know this is nothing like the rope. I'll just have to go and roll them. Whoa, that looks bad. It looks even worse when you zoom out. <laughs> I'll just buy some knots and throw it on there. Like, I guess it would have worked if I would have sculpted it in first and then then cut it open instead of cutting it open first and then trying to sculpt on top of it. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I ruined the dress again. You didn't ruin the dress? What? I ain't make it better. Alright, well then, I guess I'll just have to go to Texture Root or look on the marketplace and see if anybody has. Although I'm terribly afraid to look up knots on Second Life Marketplace. <laughs> I'm sure I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, mesh, not. God. Let's see. Surprisingly, I guess because I didn't have mature and adult on, nothing terrible showed up. <coughs> Ow. Except for your cough. You do realize that you've got your friend all concerned for you over here. I'm sorry, it's nothing major. It was, it was terrible before, but I'm way better now. I mean, I can talk, so that's it. Before... <laughs> That's a damn sight better than yeah. Uh -huh. Although it was so funny trying to talk. Alright, ain't in here. Any building and object components? Let's see. Not rope, rope knots. Permanent. Permanent. <sighs> <laughs> All right, forget it. I'll just go through the texture route. I'm so sorry. I wish I could have made something nicer. It's just out of my skill range right now. Uh, let's see what I can come up with really quickly. <laughs> okay, because that looks terrible. Out of here. Terrible thing, you. Yeah, because the, uh, huh. mm -hmm. the type of, uh, the type of ball that's part of the frog mm -hmm. is what's called a monkey head knot. Huh. So I'm looking to see if, uh, if maybe there is a monkey head knot. If you see it on another garment, that's not a problem either. Just let me know. Wink. No. Huh. Profound sadness. Let's see here. Um, what format of 3D object could you work with? All of it except for Max. MA. I should have did the cooking show thing. You know when they make the garment in advance. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be all kinds of <laughs> smart. <laughs> oh. Well, there is a tutorial on YouTube on how to make one. Ah, like learn them. I should really learn how to make it. Blender add-on script. Off of Pinterest, that's nice. Now we're we'll doing it properly. We have ass at the mighty Ginkgo. Like so. Well, now, see, this is just wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yes, we've got a whole bunch of things available for you in blenders as uh, primitives you can work with. Monkey head? Sure, here you go. Here's a monkey's head. Oh, that's Susan. Susan needs to get out more. <laughs> they, everybody uses Susan for everything. She's the default monkey head. Let me see if I can find her. Uh, no, I, I see it. I see it. It's, uh, it's not what... And sadly, I can't find a monkey head not without finding the monkey head. Yep. Pity. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Oh! Oh, no. Damn. That's going to go right into my weak point. I cannot do anything symmetrical. And I can't make this symmetrical because if I do, it's going to have two holes. Like, sh sh Nobody wants that. Isn't it? Because last night I was trying to warm up. I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm gonna breeze right through this <gasps> oh that's concerning oh we'll just work some texture magic that's all that is we got we got lumps there that signifies something is there <laughs> the knot is there We'll put like a ball there or something later on. That'll teach it. So let's export this dress. <coughs> Sculpt. Let's bring it again. Do, 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 do. I'm like, what did I just name it? Oh, it's not that bad. Alright, now we can get to the fun rigging part of this video. Sorry, it's made right now for just the plain old roof. Is the length of this dress okay? Or should it be wider? Uh... How tall is the marionette that you've got? The standard roof second life. Which I don't recall. Oh, okay. well, I have no idea. Okay, for all right, hold on a second. Uh, Fujin was five foot nothing. Her words. So, I'm not sure how that. Uh, I'm not sure how that would exactly translate. Hmm. On. Let's see, on her, it was about that. It should be... I'll give or take, that should be about, right? Okay. Alright, well, let's start the rigging process, which is going to go by super fast. Watch. Now, see, if this was during one of my DJ sets... I would have already called you on this one. Oh. Yeah, it's just a matter of who had the song. The Sex Pistols. There it is. 1979. Friggin' in the Riggin'. That's what hell of a title. Yeah, they were an interesting group. <laughs> Sid Vicious was um, not the nicest of people. Well, with a name like that, you would think. He yeah, he angel. was. There, there are certain words that I don't know that I'm allowed to use for him, so I won't. <laughs> but I'll just go ahead and say he was uh, 
a tad disrespectful. Well, damn it. I forgot I'm in the wrong mode. Sorry. I shouldn't be cursing. I'm trying to drop that and be a lady this year. <laughs> trying to be a lady? I'm, I'm trying to be more ladylike and not curse, not curse, finish my deadlines, clean up more, and fix the washing machine so I can stop traveling across the utility room. That was my New Year's resolution. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about being a lady for a second. One of considered, arguably, one of the most graceful people in movies. Uh -huh. You remember Mary Poppins? Yeah. Julie Andrews? You know that she was in a movie called S.O.B.? No, I did. She was in a movie named S.O.B. Popular, public, and... What? Yep. I want to see this movie. It's... <laughs> that sounds awesome. If, it's funny because that's what, exactly what I'm thinking of, like how to be very prim, proper, ladylike, you know, Julie Andrews. Well, the funny part is I kind of borrowed, ripped off from Mary Poppins because the website that I had. Oh, from a cog. Okay. Oh, sorry. The, the website name for the company that I was going to be starting for mm. the leather work is actually called practically impractical oh jeez um, can you hang on for one second sure All right. okay sorry about that and welcome back to the video after that clean cut no you did not <laughs> see that real quick quick cheat cheat there <laughs> my videos always do that I'm like oh, hang on let me just pause this for one second and it's actually three hours later that's why I never make it big enough so you can see the clock do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I was doing a tutorial. Let me go back. Hey guys, see how fast it loaded? <laughs> Amazing how that works. TV magic. See, it's a good thing you don't get to see what's on my screen. Hmm, I wonder. It wouldn't fit on yours. I've got two monitors. Oh man, how lucky. Well, semi lucky, semi not. I got a widescreen and then it was like, oh, I've still got this old LCD hanging around. I should see if I could hook that up to, oh, it does work. Okay, good. Yeah. Which works out very conveniently because when I'm DJing in Second Life and I've got all kinds of social media open at the same time, you know, it's good to have a second window. My computer blew up when I tried to do that. It was like, nope. Um, do you want this? This truck should be fit mesh too. That way it can jiggle. I'm in bouncing between the avastars. I forgot how to do it. I'm like, uh, how do you make stuff jig? And, uh, controls the head. Then I just removed the thing from it. There you go. There we go. Half yeah. life, please. Yeah, again, that was, that was something that she, she loved. It looked like it it was just this side of naughty. That's how that, that's one of the things that she always loved. If it was just this side of naughty and it couldn't fall over that edge, but it looked like it might. Yeah, that's that's how it should be. Okay, it's got jiggle. So this and that's terrible, so we're gonna fix it. I'm so sorry it's taking so long. I did not think it, a simple dress would be like this. That's usually how it is, isn't it? Well, part of it has got to do with it being, you know, what it is. You know, it's a dress. But I know for well that you're also looking at it and thinking, I got to really do a good job. I got to really do a good job. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be nice. And I appreciate that. I really, really do. 
it is my honor and pleasure to do this. Oh, that's right. You said you're not married yet. No, okay, not yet. I will have to think about this now. Mm. Oh, but wait. he is in the You're room. doing for me, so <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. No, it doesn't work that way. Payments the other way around. Damn it. Never mind. Damn it. <laughs> Naughty treble. Yes. Yeah, that's good enough. As long as the legs work. That's all that really matters when you're wearing a dress is that when you sit down, it's like, well, it doesn't do that. <laughs> but that's what alphas are for. So, yeah, we'll be good. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah, just alpha your body out, people. It, it bends, and you can walk, and it don't look like pants. So, isn't that all the Second Life garments strive for? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. My lazy butt. Why are the bones showing like this? Maybe it's just big boned. <laughs> I loathe this Avastar so much, but I miss the old classic one, but whatever, gotta get with the times. And this is the old, old the new old Avastar, so, alright, so we have the dress, it is rigged for the most part, it needs an outfit for the most part, but it's pretty much done now, so we can do two things. We can start texturing it. I'm going to turn that on because that was concerning. Oh! Oh, okay. I was totally worried there for a second that the whole dress was transparent. It's not. It's fine. Alright, so we have two things that we can do right now. We can make a texture for it and try to get it to look like this again. Or we can just make it as a new template and people can't are you kidding me doggone it <laughs> guess what i did I rigged... how about you just go ahead and tell me i rigged the wrong dress <laughs> i rigged the base i didn't rig the one that we put all those fancy details on <laughs> I'm all like, yay, we're done. This is the one that I was supposed to rig. Oops. Classic zero. <laughs> okay, show of hands in the comments. How many of you were going ahead and yelling and screaming at your monitors? How many? Like, yeah, oh no, you're doing the wrong one. Oh. See, now all of you people who've been looking at the comments already and are going, what the hell? When the hell? Oh, 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 no, no, oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Poor Zero. <laughs> and before anybody says anything, why didn't I catch it? Because I know jack squat about any of this. <laughs> it's totally cool. No problem. We can do this again. As soon as I remember what I had to do to get to do that again, then we can do it again. This sucks. Cause last night I was all like, "I'm a warm up. I'm I'm rusty. I went on vacation. I haven't created mesh in a while," and I was making all these outfits and rigging them last night. I'm like, "All right." Not once did I ever think, "Let's make a practice of the dress you're going to be making tomorrow." That did not dawn on me at all. Like. Nah, we'll just do it. We'll do it live. That kind of thing. <laughs> <coughs> Don't even get me started with that. Alright, now we can break the texture. <laughs> but I guess you're right. If this was like a normal commission, I would have had this done for you like a half an hour ago. Well, considering this is A, a labor of love, and B, being done for free, just because, I have no arguments. I have no complaints. I'm grateful. You're so nice. Other people are like, oh. And then complaining about the topology and 
the UVs. Not it. I have no idea how any of that works. <laughs> I don't really care much for it. I just like, as long as the texture looks good when it's done, that's all that matters to me. But I have certain friends who are like, I have to make sure everything is perfect on this. If it is not perfect, then my life has no meaning. That thing must be filled with boxes, no triangles. One of them just gave me this evil eye and was like, you know that cat is messed up, right? I was like, yeah, it's messed up, but it's still good. Like, I made a little cat avatar. And I was like, you know that's messed up, right? I'm like, yeah, I know it's messed up. Like, I just thought that you could do better. But if you think this is okay, then I support you. Uh, like, Damn. Now I gotta fix this whole thing. I actually believe that's how I got sick. Because I stayed up all night trying to fix it. With the fan on. <laughs> I guess that's, that's that. Oh, I don't know. I don't feel it. Alright, time to go paint. Oh, sorry for keeping you. No, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I'm trying to see if I've got a better picture of it for you also, and I don't think that I do easily findable. I don't know what I named the dress when I saved it just now. Well, while you're hunting that down, uh, do you mind if I plug a little something? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Well, for anybody that wants to help out with the fundraising and such, if you wanted to do it in Second Life itself, I'm sure that Bun will have all my information in there for you. Uh, the name of the team, would, and there is also uh, an avatar with the same name, is End of Cycle for Sarcoma. And I know it's a little bit of a mouthful, but... Once once you see it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, my wife did not particularly care for the name of the fundraising team, but it kind of came to me and it stuck and it made sense because the fundraising is for the ride for Roswell, which the, hot uh, the hotel, listen to me, the hospital is called the Roswell Park Cancer Institute, which is here in Buffalo. It's actually named for the first big doctor that was there, and his name was Roswell Park, believe it or not. So if you go looking for the ride for Roswell, it's kind of hard to miss it. And the team name, of course, End of Cycle for Sarcoma. If you wanted to go donating to the team, if you just put in End of Cycle as in bicycle, because it's a bicycle ride, there's over 10,000 people that end up showing for this once a year, and it's a, it's an amazing thing. Uh, you can donate through that if you'd like to donate to one of the people on the team, beautiful. If you can spare $20, instead of becoming, in, instead of just giving the money to one of the riders, please consider becoming a virtual rider. It doesn't change how much money you're putting into it, but if you put $20 in, you can effectively become part of the team. You're under no obligation to fundraise. You're under no obligation to go out and do any writing. You're not under any obligation to come out here to Buffalo. But you become part of the team. And I don't know that I can offer anything other than my thanks and my gratitude for helping. So... Anybody that's looking to help out, and if you've stuck it out this long, first off, you know, thank you. And if you do end up joining, let me know that it's because of Bun's vids. I'd be more than happy to make sure that she gets some extra praise because 
any opportunity, you know? Sorry. Yep. Uh, cool. <laughs> yeah. I'd plug my video series too, but that's a whole other thing for another day. Hey, go here. We're here. Got the airspace. Well, go ahead. hell. Advertise right. on up. I don't care. <laughs> In that case, the video series that I do over on YouTube is also a podcast that I do. It's called Holy Crap the Vlogcast. Yes, yes, I know. It's I'm really good with coming up with these catchy names that nobody seems to like, but they do the job. <laughs> but uh, holy crap the vlogcast.com if you want to find out a little bit about it. Uh we end up talking about stuff from a skeptical point of view. So we talk through a lot of different topics. Uh I end up opening up with a five minute discussion, well, uh, a five minute monologue about whatever is most on my mind about whatever particular topic is going on. And then we go on from there and talk about whatever else is going on. As you can well imagine, there are various things that have been in the news recently that have been all up in my grill. I don't know. You kids still say that anymore. I, I I'm almost 50. Let me, I, I don't care. Whatever. It's, I'm 39 years old. And I'm sticking with that. <laughs> As for the many years that I've known him, he's still on the custom use of 39. Well, one of these days, there's going to be a leap year. I'll have to move forward. <laughs> uh, I am actually 48 and proud to be. Uh, I, it's an old joke from an old, old-time old radio guy, so don't worry about it. But uh, holy crap, the vlogcast. Uh, it, it basically started because Friday night shows that I would DJ... Uh, still do you know we we would have some stuff pop up in the news and we would end up talking about them and they would kind of have us getting on a bit of a rant about stuff and people were finally like uh shoot that's yeah that show isn't being fun anymore because you guys are a little uh over the top oh okay yeah let's uh let's let's fix that so started uh, started our own show for exactly that reason, and I try very hard to make sure that it's not centered on just the U.S. I want to talk about stuff that's popping up wherever, anywhere. So we've talked about Australia, we've talked about um, Europe, we've talked about space sciences, we've talked about oh. philosophical stuff. Oh, I'm so, sorry. So folks get uh, interested, want to check us out. Uh, again, holy crap, the vlogcast over on YouTube. If you like it, there's a, a podcast feed, Oops. so you can just listen to it if you like that too. And kind of work it from there. I feel a little juvenile just now because I went over to click on the picture and it's like, click, 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 click. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, because you're clicking on her boob? Yeah, well, I'm grabbing on it. It's like... It's fine. Um, That's fine. I'm sorry. Let me switch it. No, it's perfectly fine. She's not complaining. Ah! Let, me, let me tell you how, uh, how crazy some of this humor can get. We found out couple weeks ago that there is a superhero camp you know how they're like science camps and and such there's a superhero camp there's a superhero camp for kids to go to okay Two kids all right now that's not bad I, my mind instantly thought like it's one of those adult camps uh there isn't that i know of but it wouldn't surprise me if there was you know learn how to scale walls and that kind of thing uh -huh. which I think that would be freaking awesome. You but, never know when you need to scale a wall. Yeah. So it's a two-week camp. And when we found out about it, we were with a, a bunch of friends of the family. And little one went ahead and whispered something to one of our friends who started laughing. And I'm just like, okay, what? So Tiny goes ahead and says... You know, is all embarrassed at first and then says, 
Well, only one of my parents is dead, so will I only be able to stay for one week? <laughs> because, you know, Batman. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. And then the joke became, well, now I better lock my door at night because... I want to stay for the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's it's possible to have, you know, a good sense of humor about these kinds of things. Sometimes black senses of humor is all you got. Yeah. Uh, I wonder why it's not changing. There we go. Now we're going to make that black. I don't even know why I stress so hard trying to make it red. Do, do, do. So as far as uh, as far as the cancer thing goes with uh, with family, for anybody that might be out there who has family that's going through, they know someone close by who is going through a, a hard medical time, regardless of what it is. If you can, <coughs> sorry, ask if you can help. Something small, make dinner, run an errand answer phones, put up a sign on their door that says no you know, uh, no solicitations during the hours of. You'd be surprised how far a little offering can go. Uh, every year on the day that my wife passed, I go back to the hospital and I bring homemade dinner for the nurse's station. Because I saw what they went through and it's hard for me to look at somebody who's out in their scrubs on the daily <coughs> basis I'm sorry. you know going to the uh, grocery store or whatever and not realize some of these people go through their day having new patients come in and not know if they're going to be leaving in a wheelchair or on a stretcher you know it's i couldn't i couldn't for the life of me imagine what that's like so I do a little bit here and there where I can, you know, uh, like I keep telling people, if I can, I will. If I can't, I'll find some way, some other that can help. You know, you'd be surprised. You, you stop somebody who's in medical scrubs and they're actually a radiology tech you know, for x-rays or cat, pet scan, that kind of thing. And, you know, get their attention. Excuse me, I, I see that you're still in your work clothes. And I will offer up my handshake and I will say, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you do, but I just hope that your next shift is otherwise uneventful. And I've done that with cops. I've done that with security people. Because it's amazing how much better somebody's day can be because all of a sudden somebody just really quickly said, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're going to be doing. I just hope that you're going to be okay. Done. Simple. Doesn't get into the whole anything with anybody because, you know, and forgive me, yelling and screaming, black lives matter, blue lives matter. You know what? Every life in some way matters. Just get past all that for a couple of seconds and just, hey, you matter. Stay safe. It's amazing how far that goes. I truly, I try really hard not to get into the political stuff because I don't want people to get all kinds of pissy. But when you boil it down, you know, there are certain pieces that I don't think anybody can really argue about. Oh, do tell. <sighs> I mean, if you want. I mean, we got time. I mean, we are, it's already at the hour mark here. I'm pretty sure everybody left. <laughs> yeah, you're not offending anybody. Fine. 
one of the pieces that I covered on Holy Crap was trying to figure out and and you better watch out. You're going to you're going to laugh hard enough to choke again. <laughs> I got my hand on the mute. What really qualifies as bestiality? And this was one of those things that kind of ran into my head because oh, I was driving deliveries at the time and I wasn't thinking about anything and all of a sudden just popped into my head. Brain, what are you doing to me? What are you talking about, brain? And it wouldn't go away. It's like, okay. So I wrote it down and I started to investigate it a little bit in my head as I'm driving. And I grew up with Star Trek. And it got me to thinking a little bit. What would qualify actually as bestiality is it because it is a different species that's having sex with another species or is it a species that doesn't have the cognitive ability to understand what's going on or to communicate it which are two different pieces so then I got to going on this a little bit have we been seeing bestiality under our own noses in the old Star Trek? Because if it's just a matter of different species, well... And Kirk's been humping anything that moves. Almost. <laughs> Did you see the robot chicken sketch about that? Nope. <laughs> That's hilarious, you should. He spreads, what are the space herpes across the universe? <laughs> That's just wrong. Yeah, so he had to go and alert all the women he slept with that he had gave them space herpes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was hilarious. No, probably would be. I've never seen it, so I, I don't know. What? you never seen Robot Chicken? I've seen a couple of skits that were pointed my way, but, you know, it's, uh, okay. Huh. I thought you would be over that kind of silly stuff. Especially all the Star Trek skits they do. Mm -hmm. Not really, no. <laughs> well, it's cool. That's, then that's fine. Oh, sorry, the other half of that. Oh. What if it's a matter of that there are animals that, or what we, you know, other life forms that do understand, that have a certain cognitive ability, but we can't communicate with them, that might be actually receptive. There are dolphins that seem to be as cognizant as we, but we can't communicate. There are horses, there are mares, who will go ahead and rub themselves on pieces and sometimes even against people, uh, farriers, that are working on their horseshoes and have uh. apparently no problem. So, you know, it, it was one of those things that just went through my head. And it's like, where actually is the line? If we found out that dolphins were cognizant and we found out how to communicate with them, where would the line be at that point? And I don't even know. That became a really interesting question to me because I have no idea. Hmm. Oh, for heaven. I'm sorry. I hate the texture and it's not my forte. No, you're a damn sight better than I am. <laughs> I know how to open the program. I know how to close the program. After that, <laughs> I am lost. Did you cry? Because if you didn't cry, you're above a lot of other people who first start out in this. I didn't cry. I looked at it and I said, I don't get this. Yeah, I, I cried. I opened up Blender and I was like, oh my God, is it cube? I can't do this. <laughs> now, nah, for me, I, I knew full well that it's, it's the weapon of choice especially in a lot of professional environments. So I knew full well, it's set up for professionals. Professionals know what they're doing. Okay, I'm not a pro. I don't know what I'm doing. 
okay, that's fine. I'm in my place. By a piece of freaking code. Okay, fine. Um, sorry. Would you be okay if this was just a template kind of thing? Because I can't make it all pretty like the original one. I thought I could. I was wrong. I'm not sure if I understand what you mean. Oh, well, they have templates for dresses and stuff like that. Then people can take this dress and then decorate it all they want. It's the shape and everything. <laughs> well, well, what part of it is it that's being the problem child? Um, I don't know. I just don't feel confident in my ability to, to texture right at all. I felt I could get over it and be like, yeah, this is how we texture it. And it totally failed in Photoshop. And I feel like really embarrassed because I know this dress is kind of important. <sighs> well, it is, it is all about quote unquote, the red dress. All right, then I can at least do the red, make it red. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I'm sorry. No, there's nothing to be sorry about. Uh, if, as with everything else, this is the kind of thing that is an actual learning experience. This is a piece that, uh, to my knowledge, I don't think that you've done something quite like this before. Mm, no. I had to think about it, I'm like, wait, and did, did, no, no, I haven't. Yeah. So you've got something that you have worked over, something that you've got to learn a little bit more to really make it go through. And, you know, if it's a matter of that, you would rather work it over one or two more times afterwards to finish up how you feel it should end up. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, my conducting teacher in college, mm -hmm. for one of his uh, exams when he was uh, when he was studying, they were supposed to write a short piece of music in a particular style, and it was supposed to be just a you know a week long project. And he came in to class and, okay, where's your project? It's not done. And he's going to Juilliard. So this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> and the teacher's humoring him. It's like, okay, would you like to explain yourself? And he's kind of embarrassed. He's like, you know, I tried to finish it. I tried. And I can't make it finish. It doesn't want to finish. I tried one way to try to close it up. It didn't want to finish. I couldn't. I can't get it to stop. And the teacher listened and nodded and it's like, bring it to me when you're done. And he was like shocked about this. It's like, uh, are you, are you sure? Bring it to me when you're done. And it did. And the piece made sense when he just allowed it to go where it wanted to go. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a new piece for you. And if this is using new techniques that you have not played around with, uh, for instance, I mean, trying to make the monkey head for the, uh, uh, for the frog. Hell, trying to make the frog. That's something you've not done before. No, I haven't. So it's a piece that, like you were saying, oh, if I had done it this way instead of doing it this way, it probably would have been easier. I probably would have known how to do that. Okay, I don't know quite how to do this, so let me work it this way. That I know. They're pieces you've never done before. I get that. Yes. If you would like to hold on to it and wait to release it and work it over a little bit further, I've got no problem with that at all, of course. Mm -hmm. if, you would, if you would like to just put it out there and say... This this is a demo. This is this is a trial. This is where I'm going. I'm still working this over, and if folks want to have something to do with, 
it is ultimately your your piece. No way. Um, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I think. Thank you. I don't want my the goal was in all like oh <clears throat> was to finish it on here and then information and link and all that jazz. Oh, it didn't work out that way. I'm so sorry. You've nothing to be sorry for. Seriously. You were doing something because you wanted to, and I have said I am gratified, I'm flattered. I I have no way of doing any of this kind of thing for myself. So thank you for doing even this much. I mean it's it's fun to be able to see how something like this works. Tears. No tears. <laughs> Okay, well, I've kept you for, like, way longer than I should have. So, uh, I'm sorry. At least I'm sorry for that. Sorry for keeping you for so long. But thanks for joining me. I'm not giving you the boot now unless you want to, you know, get... <laughs> well, unfortunately, I am going to have to. I've got a couple of things, including my own laundry. Whoops. No, it's okay. All right, well, we will, I guess, let me at least make it the red dress and not the white dress. Oh, no, that's the cool. So. As an aside to that, when we were in Japan, she did buy a wedding kimono that is beautiful white, and I love it. Still got it. Wedding kimonos don't, are beautiful. Don't know that uh, ever going to get used. But I've got it open and out. <laughs> Maybe Tiny can use it. Probably not. Oh. But even so. <laughs> can you not grab the uh, the picture itself to, like, eye drop the color? I did. Oh. I did it earlier. It was this red right here. Or at least that's the red that was on... Was it the picture? Yeah, that was on the picture. I think I closed it. But if you don't agree with this red, I can easily change it. No, that works. It is too dark, though. Curses. Alright, well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm going to continue on this project. Maybe off camera, but it's definitely going to be released, and there'll be like a big release thing with Bob, and I'll call you again <laughs> or show you whichever is easier. However, it works. All right. So I'm sorry we didn't finish this mission, but we got it started, and it's a good base. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll have all the description. The, what is it? Everything that we talked about, all your links and stuff like that, down in the description. So anybody who's made it this far, <laughs> I'm totally surprised what there is. Um, we can totally see it. And thank you. And a link to your channel and all the rest of that jazz. Although I don't know how to do that now that they took um, those anno anno annotations, as I was announced. Uh, put it in the show notes. Show notes? In the description. This is going to end up over on uh, YouTube, right? Right. Yeah, just put it into the description and link it off right there. Okie doke, I can do that. All right, so this is our first episode. Thank you for being a part of it. It may have failed, but it was fun going no, down. No, 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 no. There are no failures. Oh, really? There is a future completion. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and if you believe that, you can go ahead and keep it. Yeah, this was a future, was it the, the prequel to the completed episode? <laughs> and it was fun. I hope so. Thank you. No problem. Don't be a stranger. Come by again. I will continue being as strange as I have ever been. Which is a reference to some of the DJ stuff I do. That'll be another time. Another time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is a running gag. I never know how to end videos. It's simple. 
Thank you for being with us. If you've enjoyed what you've been watching, please comment and let us know that you are enjoying and watching. And more importantly, let other people know too, because we do, because you're enjoying it. So professional. I've been doing this for a while. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, you heard the guy. Bye, everyone. <laughs>